Alrighty, in this video, we're going to do a couple things, and one of them being we're going to go ahead and get the view matrix of our character. That is what we're going to use as kind of our projection, so we can say, okay, this point in the world, our VEC3, is can be converted to this point on our screen. So we're pretty much taking 3D coordinates and converting them to 2D. So this space in the world, for example, I don't know, or that fake little bolt, I don't know what you'd call it in this case, what it's supposed to be doing. Where that is in the world, we want to convert this to screen space. So right now, it might be at the center of my screen. Now it's at the bottom center, or the bottom, or zero on the X and negative one on the Y. Now it's at, you know, negative one, positive one, negative one, negative one, and so on. So that's what we're going to be doing. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and loop through the entity list as well, get the entity's location. We will to screen it using our view matrix and the entity's location. And that allows us to get a 2D position in our screen of where to draw to. So we can take a point such as the center of our screen right here and draw it to the right there where our crosshair is. So that's basically what we're going to do. So to begin, we're actually going to copy this do while loop and move it into our while loop up here. So the reason for that is whenever the you know the round is over and we switch teams, uh, if we didn't have it to where we we're updating our local player, we would run into the issue of ourselves. So for example, if we do a team ESP, like we make our team blue and the enemies red, like I like to do, well, then our team might be red and enemies might be red and it's just going to be a mismatch. It's not going to be working as intended because our local player is now different than what it was before. So now let's go... We'll do that actually. Yeah, we'll do that. Be everything below our window related stuff. So we're going to do everything in here. So first things first, we need our view matrix, and that is client and then the view matrix offset. And we want to make a variable type for this. So pretty much it's a, do it here. The way I have it set up to read from this word of screen, it is set up as, I keep, yeah, I'm being stupid. We have 16 total elements. So access zero element one or element zero one two blah 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 does math so we need a float array with 16 elements in it so float let's do view matrix 16 and this is what we're going to fill so go yeah right here so we're going to go ahead and get the view matrix so we're going to do view matrix equals mem dot read mem and it's going to be client plus uh, dw view matrix so this is going to have some issues mostly to the type that I'm reading it out to so we have the issue of reading to an unknown size so I'm going to go ahead and go to data types. I want to add a struct view, or I'll just call it matrix. Inside it's going to contain a float. Uh, let's actually change it to V matrix. Or no, float V matrix of size 16. And we're going to pass it in to V or matrix as the type. And then what we need to do is I'm going to convert this from a float to matrix. And there we go. So we have our new data type called matrix and the variable name view matrix. We are reading in the type into view matrix. Now we can make use of it. So we want to loop through the entity list. So for, let's do a short int i equals zero, i is less than 64, and we increment i. 
So the reason we're doing I is less than 64 is if you have, you know, if you have four players in the server, you're going to be like 0, 1, 2, 3. If you have 64 players in the server, it's going to go 0 all the way up to 63. So it's just to account for if you're not playing comp. So if you're playing comp with 5v5, you'd only have 10 elements, that kind of thing. So this is just to kind of cover the general use cases where you are going to have more than 10 players. So now we want to go ahead and get the entity. So the way we do that is you went pointer t. Entity equals. Now we're going to be using our index here. And we also need to make sure we have the entity list. So mem dot read mem. You went pointer t. And let's see, we have we need the entity list. So that would be off of the let's see. I'm, I can't remember exactly where it's offset. Let me double check real quick. Okay, yeah, so it is off client. So client plus then we need the entity list, so DW entity list plus I, so that way we know which we're going to. And we want to multiply that by so that'll put us over to the correct portion, in which case we do if entity. Well, let me rephrase that. If, oh well, yeah, we're doing equals null. We want to continue. Now continue, pretty much all that does is it makes it so if this statement's true, we continue. So we don't run anything there. We do not run. Instead, we just continue by jumping right back up to the top and starting again. So it uh, kind of ignores everything below, so to speak, if that makes any sense. Uh, we look through the entity list, get the view matrix we've already done. We need to get the entity's location. So that's going to be a vec3. So vec3 entity location equals mem dot read mem vec3 entity plus no, it's vec origin. Yeah, m underscore vec origin. Now we have pretty much everything we need. So I want to go ahead and get. Uh, actually, we can just do it here. So vec two. Let's do screen chords or screen coordinates, because this is where the world screen function is going to output everything, and we're going to do if world to screen entity location address of screen chords and then our matrix which is our view matrix dot v matrix what are you complaining about what's the type oh so there we go and pretty much this returns true. Well, let me rephrase that. It returns false if the person we're trying to visually see is behind us. So that's what this line here is for. Otherwise, it returns true. So if it returns true, the player is in front of us. So what I'm going to actually do is if that is false, we continue because it doesn't matter to us at all. So now we have our screen coordinates. So we have this place where we want to draw to. So we pretty much we want to take it so we have two points. So let's say we're trying to draw a line. We have our first point which be at the dead center of our screen at the very bottom. And because we're working with negative one to positive one on the x-axis, negative one is all the way to the left, positive one's all the way to the right, and on the y-axis, negative one's all the way at the bottom, positive uh, y's all the way to the top. So we want to start at the very bottom center. So that's going to look something like this. So 0 on the x because that's in the center. Negative 1 on the y because we want it to be at the bottom. And then the second coordinate we want to write to is the one we have. So that's going to be our screen chords. So we're going to make a line from this portion, so this uh, coordinate on our screen, all the way to our screen coordinates that our word of screen gave us. So to do that, we need to draw a line. But 
that's not going to be included in this video, I don't think. No, yeah, we are going to draw a line. So we have all that, and we need to draw a line to location. So I want to go ahead and make a simple vec2 up here outside of our while loop. So vec2, let's do line origin. I think that's spelled OK. Then I want to go ahead and pass in parameters. So 0 on the x and negative 1 on the y, which of course is going to fail because I have no constructor for it. So let's go ahead and create one. So vec2, float, uh, I don't know, x, float, y, x equals x, y equals y. We're good to go. Then we want to create, well, never mind, not create, we already have it, our screen cords. So I need to, all right, fine, screw you. I'm not going to bother. So line origin dot x equals uh, zero and line origin dot y equals negative one. There, problem solved. You can tell I'm just trying to skip through this. So now we want to draw a line. So what was it? It was gl vertex 2f. And then it takes in, this is going to be our initial point. So in our case, it is going to be the x. So what was it? Line origin, yeah, line origin dot x and line origin dot y. That's going to be our first point. And then the second point is going to be our screen cords. So gl vertex 2f, so screen cords dot x and screen cords dot y. Eventually we're going to make our own functions for drawing a line, which will make this a lot cleaner. And there we go. We need to, is that already set up? What is it called? It's like gl begin? gl begin gl lines. I think that's correct. Oh, we're about to find out. Okay, let's go ahead and add our menu. And as you can tell, we have some issues. And that is because we are not clearing the buffer. Okay, so the issue that was causing was we we're not clearing the buffer. So we're not doing any sort of cleanup. And let's see. Okay, so we need to, crap, what is to clear the buffer? Clear, clear buffer data. I do not entirely remember exactly what it was. Let's see. We're not using dip. So I think it would just be clear buffer data. No, but I don't remember there being any parameters that it took in. Again, I'm going to go double check. Okay, so I double checked. We're already actually clearing it. But what I forgot to do was if you look up here, GL begin. What we want to do is, I lost it. Where we go to draw our lines, paste it there. We got to make sure we call GL end. So now we run it. Uh, insert. Oh, cool. Nothing's getting drawn now. Perhaps you need to be cleared up there initially. Ah, that's why. Right. So. We now have our lines being drawn from the dead center of our screen to our entities. You can see the same thing up here for the enemies. Now there is a slight issue that we have to check. And that would be if the entity is dormant. So you, I don't know if you would just see from that point, but this line right here, not going to update, is it? This line right here 
when I was walking around the corner and this entity became, no longer was dormant, what it did was it snapped once I got him. So once it was no longer dormant to our... Uh, sorry, I'm doing that opposite. Once it is not dormant to our client. So pretty much I'm seeing every client's previous location. So I shouldn't... So let's pretend these were enemies and these are my teammates. I shouldn't be able to see these lines because I don't know where these enemies actually are. For all I know, they very well could have moved. So they could be over there on B site. They could be over on A site. Whatever. So that's what the dormant check is going to be for. But for now, we have everything working. And what I did to make the quick fix was when we cleared the buffer, I just moved that up before we actually tried to draw. And we are good to go. So in the next video, uh, let's, yeah, in the next video, we're going to end up setting it up so the entities that are dormant do not actually go about, hey, I landed to be help, do not actually get the lines drawn to them. So for example, if I'm right here, these lines should not be drawn, like at all. So that's what we're going to end up tackling. Now that pretty much concludes it for this video. So, like I said, in the next one, we're going to do a dormant check. And then we're going to try to go ahead and get teams. Uh, let's see, don't draw if local player. Actually, let's leave that right now. Let's do that guy. So what, what we're going to do is if entity equals null. Or, whoops. Entity equals local player, we want to continue. So that makes sure that we are not trying to draw a line to ourselves. So we're completely ignoring ourselves. We don't care about ourselves. We only want other people. So anyways, that's taken care of. In the next video, we're going to do a dormant check. We're going to get the teams uh, so we can do a comparison and make colors. I want to go ahead and make helper functions for drawing. And... Uh, I think that's going to probably be it for the next video. Can't think of much else. And then we're going to actually start doing some more menu stuff because right now just having exit, yeah, it's not that exciting. So uh, we might add some small things like little basic feature toggles or at least show you how to do so so you can implement them easily yourself. Because quite frankly, using I'm GUI is flat out effortless. Anyways, enough procrastinating. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description where I cover how to create a complete game mode from scratch where we create Team Deathmatch in Unreal Engine 4 using C++. And if you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find a link to my Discord server below as well, and I'll try to answer any questions you have to the best of my abilities. And as always, I will see you in the next video.